All right, we're beginning on magnetism, and today in class we discussed magnetic force just a little bit, So, and we discussed right-hand rules. So the important thing to remember about the right-hand rule is to always use your right hand. Um, that may sound silly to say, but I deal with it every year. So the two right-hand rules, the two, two equations that we have describing magnetic force now, um, is one for charge, so the magnetic force, and we use B for magnetism, is equal to the magnitude of the charge times the velocity of the charge, which is a vector, crossed with the magnetic field, which is also a vector. So in this case, A is your velocity, B is the magnetic field, so your pointer finger is the velocity, your middle finger is the magnetic field, and force goes with your thumb. They are mutually orthogonal to each other. It's a 90 degree angle between these two, a 90 degree angle between these two, and a 90 degree angle between those two. Um, it's not a good 3D drawing. What this does is tell me um, the force on a positive particle. Now, if we're dealing with a negative particle, all we have to do is say that the force is opposite the thumb for the negative particle. Um, all the cross product is going to do is tell us direction. If we want the magnitude of the force, it's just the magnitude of the charge times its velocity times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle, and that's the angle between a and B. Uh, and we'll look at some examples of how to do this, but this is how we're going to find the magnitude of the force. Now, most of the time it's really nice and we get this angle to be 90 degrees. In fact, that's what we're aiming for. We'll look at what to do when that doesn't happen. Our second right-hand rule is for a current carrying wire. The magnetic force on a current carrying wire is the current in the wire times the length of the wire that's in the magnetic field. And we give that the vector direction. It's in the direction of the current crossed with the magnetic field. Uh, so in this case, again, our force is still the thumb. This is the current or the length, IL. Uh, and then we have B, which is again the magnetic field. So let's say our magnetic field is into the page. what X's mean. X's are into the page. Uh, dots are out of the page. And let's pretend that we have a positive particle moving in this direction with a velocity. Now, if we look at this, we point our thumbs in the direction of the velocity. Sorry. If we point our pointer finger in the direction of velocity, our middle finger in the direction of this, our thumb points up. And so this is going to experience a force that is up. But in the next instant, it's going to change the velocity, and the force is still going to be at 90 degrees to it. So what we see for particles traveling perpendicular to a magnetic field, we see them move in circular patterns. Now, wires are a little bit easier to deal with. We're not going to change the direction that the current is moving in a wire. So if we have current going this way, point our finger in the direction of current, our middle finger in the direction of the magnetic field, we'll see that the force on this thing oh, one red. we'll see that the force on this thing lifts it up. It's not going to change it. Now that should make sense because we said a while ago that current was direction of positive charges. That's what current was. So it makes sense that the force would be in the same direction. Now, in the same way, the magnitude of that magnetic force is equal to the current times the length of the wire in the magnetic field times the magnetic field times the sine of the angle between my current and my magnetic field. 
But again, all we use this for is finding the magnitude. Otherwise, and direction is really the important part, uh, in my opinion, it's the harder part, we're going to use that cross product. Now, that's a simple primer on magnetic force. We need to know these equations. We need to know how they work with the right-hand rule. Um, and we need, <clears throat> we need to know that particles moving perpendicular to a magnetic field tend to go in circles because one of the places we're going to use this is, is a mass spectrometer. Um, before we do that, we're going to look at a velocity selector. My slide's a little messed up. Awesome. So, that is a velocity selector. So, the way it works is we take a charge, we send it through voltage, so it gains some speed, then it's going to go through region 2. So we have a positive charge moving in region 2, which has a magnetic field pointed into the page. The magnetic field is into the page. So it's going to experience a force from that, that, that magnetic field. Now if we use our right hand rule and point our pointer finger in the direction of the velocity, because that's the direction of the velocity, and our fingers in the direction of the magnetic field, we'll see in this case, um, my particle is going to experience a magnetic force that is downward. So what we do in order to make this happen, in order to make this work, is we're going to try to get another force to counteract that. This time it's going to be the electric force. Now, we need an electric force to work upwards on this positive particle. The top plate needs to be negative and the positive plate needs to be positive. That's going to give me an electric field that points in this direction, which will give me this electric force. So, let's look at what the balance of those forces mean. So if we have the electric field, the electric force equal to the magnetic force, well I know the magnitude of my magnetic force is Q times V times the magnetic field, and we can see that they're 90 degrees to each other, so we don't have to worry about that sine theta stuff. And I also see that the electric, and we also know that the electric field is equal to a charge times the magnitude of the electric field. So if we want to look at this relationship, we see that the Q's go away, and in general, the velocity of our particle is equal to the electric field over the magnetic field. This is how we select this specific velocity. By tuning it differently, we can get a particle of different velocities to go through in a straight line. This is the velocity necessary to pass through undeflected. <clears throat> now, a couple questions that go along with this. What happens if we go too fast? Which force wins? And I'll let you think about that. We'll discuss it in class. What happens if you go too slow? Which force wins? Which force is going to be the greatest one here? Which way will the object be deflected when these two things happen? Think on that. We'll talk about it in class tomorrow. The other part that goes along with this velocity um, selector is this guy right here. Um, that's what we're going to call the accelerating voltage. accelerating voltage. Essentially, and we need to make sure that we see that as a capital V, essentially what that does is give this particle enough energy to have this velocity. So that accelerating EMF, I know that the kinetic energy of my particle is going to be equal to the electric energy that it gains there, which is just Q times the voltage between those plates. So one-half times the mass of my particle times its velocity squared is equal to its charge times the voltage between those two plates. 
That's another way, if we know the mass of our particle, of determining a setting in order to make our velocity selector work the right way. So, this is how a velocity selector works. This is how we can use a crossed electric and magnetic field. We'll say that. Crossed electric and magnetic field to determine a velocity. A mass spectrometer is, is this end. This is a mass spectrometer. What this does um, is, is separate particles based on on their mass. Once it makes it through the velocity selector, we know that the velocity in the region is equal to the electric field over the magnetic field. And then when we go into the magnetic field, um, it's going to go in this circular path. So if, if we were to take as that charged particle, our positively charged particle is moving in this circular path, uh, if we were to draw in this region um, a free body diagram, let's let's say it's moving like this. So we're at this point, we'd see a force pointed towards the center. Um, instantaneously, the velocity is downward. The magnetic field is into the page. So we have a downward velocity and magnetic field. downward velocity magnetic field into the page um, sorry out of the page it's coming out of the page downward velocity magnetic field out of the page and we see this object experiencing a force towards the center well that's a magnetic force so in order to determine the radius here uh, we look at the sum of my forces equals the mass of my object times its acceleration and that's going to be equal to the magnetic force So we've got mv squared over r, substitute in for the centripetal acceleration, is equal to, and for magnetic force we have q times the velocity times the magnetic field. Those velocities cross out, and we see that the radius of this curvature is equal to the mass times the velocity divided by the charge times the magnetic field. And depending on the mass or depending on the charge, we can determine how this particle is going to behave. Particles of different mass will have a different radius. Particles of different magnetic field, I'm sorry, particles of different charge will also have different radius. A negative particle would have spun up the other way. Those are things that we see in mass spectrometers. So, um, we're going to have a brief discussion over this in class tomorrow. One of them is going to be over, one of the things we're going to talk about is what happens when you're going too fast or too slow for the mass, um, the velocity selector. The other one is um, there was an error in the last slide. What was it? And then we're going to talk about what happens when the angle, sorry, when the angle between, shoot, what happens when the angle between the magnetic field and the velocity is not 90 degrees. It's a very interesting problem. So those are the things that we're going to talk about tomorrow in conjunction with this.